Sometimes life sucks, it just does. Things don't go the way we want, like we've waited a year to go on the vacation of our dreams and it rains the whole week we're there. Or we're headed to an important job interview worth life-changing money and on the way, we spill coffee down the front of our clothes with no time to do anything Ooh, about I'm it. Sorry. Both of those situations suck for sure, but neither are tragic. After all, we're still on vacation in one case and it sounds like we're talking to the right people in the second. This is embracing the suck. In terms of today's real estate market, if you're a potential home buyer, if you own a home and you're ready to move, this market couldn't be suckier compared to what it was a couple of years ago. <laughs> Sorry about that. Let's start with first time home buyers. FYI, there is a silver lining. If you're a home seller, you can skip ahead to the next chapter. Traditionally, first time home buyers are coming out of a rental situation. That means they come to the table with zero equity from the sale of a home and are wholly dependent on their own resources. And in a lot of cases, cash gifts from family to help buy that first home. That's a much heavier lift than someone selling a home, cashing in on the equity gain and using those funds to help buy their next property. As of January, 2024, the average first time home buyer age is 36 years old. In 2021, the average age was 33. Why are they waiting longer? For many, student loans are taking big chunks out of that monthly income. Home prices have skyrocketed the last couple of years, though they have evened out a bit. Mortgage rates are the highest they've been in close to 13 years, and the competition for these first-time home buyers are investors and baby boomers who have significant cash reserves. In a lot of cases, first-time home buyers are simply getting outbid. Hey, I hope you like what you're seeing so far. If you're new here, welcome. If you've been here before, welcome back. If you'd like to talk about real estate in Nashville and Williamson County specifically, please reach out. My contact information is below. There's something else first time home buyers are facing that isn't talked about much and I call it the Instagram effect. The homes first time buyers were getting just a few years ago, they were different. They were bigger, they had more upgrades. The bottom line is they were fancier and a heck of a lot cheaper. But now affordability is a first time home buyer's main concern. The affordability index is at a 38 year low. That means homes are much harder to buy. The median home price in 2019 was 258,000. The interest rate was about three and a half percent. Today, the median home price is very close to 400,000 and the average mortgage interest rate is about 6.8. The principal and interest alone on each for a 30 year loan was $1,158 back then and $2,600 now. That's a hell of a barrier. The reason I mentioned Instagram is this, who doesn't want to get the nicer place and have all the bells and the whistles? We all want that. But today's first time home buyer may not have that option. They have to start a little more modestly with a little less house. The Instagram effect can sometimes push people to try to buy way more house than they need. So where's the silver lining? Well, here it is. Home prices are stabilizing. They're still rising, but slowly. Interest rates are still bouncing around, but definitely coming down, slowly. People are getting used to these new normals and things are starting to move again. The bottom line, long-term, real estate continues to go up and up and up, but at a more manageable pace these days. There's an old saying that goes, it's better to buy a house and wait rather than wait and buy a house. If you're able to buy a house, you've saved, you're honestly prepared, go buy your house. It may not be your dream home, screw Instagram, but it's a start and soon, when the time is right for you to move up, you'll have the equity gain that you can use to get that next nicer place. What about move up or downsizing buyers? If you're a buyer that's moving up or downsizing, all your answers were laid out in the first time home buyer section. If you've owned your house for at least a few years, chances are excellent. Your equity is looking pretty good about now. That equity gain puts you way ahead of the curve, but moving into a less favorable loan is something to be considered. And in general, all the same rules apply. Home prices are way up. Comparatively, interest rates are too. But with equity to carry into your next purchase, that changes the rules for you. And long-term, you'll again gain even more equity as you did before. Now. About the housing crash, for anyone looking for a huge drop in home prices, I just don't think that's gonna happen. 
They'll continue to rise, but slowly, like I said. Interest rates, I absolutely expect those to drop this year. Most experts say the rates about 6% should be expected. Some say as low as 5%, but honestly, who knows? What will possibly shock the system is when the Fed starts cutting rates. Predictions are all over the map, and certainly no one really knows when and if they will. I do believe they will, and probably be this June. But just keep a watchful eye on the Fed funds rate. When those start to drop, prepare for changes. Maybe not huge, but there will be changes. 2023 ended up with the slowest sales year in real estate in more than a decade. I think it was more like 13 years. But it looks like buyers and sellers both will start coming back to the market in 2024, and volume will surely pick up. The main reason is current housing market is being normalized. In other words, people are getting used to rates and prices, so they're going out and buying. The silver lining, things are improving for the move up and downsize and home buyer. What I'm trying to say is, if you're waiting for a shocking change in prices and or rates, that's just not in the cards. Go get your home and let that equity clock start ticking, making you bank. What about home sellers? If you're a homeowner and you wanna sell, we've got some things to talk about. If you haven't noticed, there's a lot of homes for sale on the market sitting waiting for a buyer. Things have changed for home sellers from just a couple of years ago. These days, a seller has to put in some effort to have their home sell fast and for top dollar. In 2021, you only need a house and a cardboard sign in the front yard with for sale written in crayon to get multiple offers at an over asking price. Offers over ask, no inspection, no repairs, no appraisal, that was common, at least it sure was here in Nashville. 25 to $50,000 over ask became almost expected. I actually had a seller ask me that after a weekend. We didn't get 50 over, jeez. But now, even though inventory is low, competition is pretty high. More homes are selling below asking price. Over 15% need price cuts to sell. But there's still homes selling over asking price, and the reason, it's simple. Here's the rule. Make sure your house is in a little better condition than competition and priced just a little lower. And when I say a little lower, I mean just a little lower. By pricing it right, you'll get multiple offers, chances are. Today's sellers have to negotiate. They actually have to sell their house. But what's the good news? The buyers left standing in this market are actually financially prepared. They are ready, willing, and able to buy. They're just fighting for a deal more so than in the recent past. And honestly, who can blame them? But the truth is, if your home is really the best on the block, they have the funds to buy it. The punchline is yes, the housing market has been a bloody mess for a while, but things are getting better. It wasn't so long ago that people were writing the US economy off with a recession as a certainty. Whatever happened to those people? Now all you hear about is the soft landing we were all praying for appears to be underway. By embracing the suck, you're actually tapping into a market that most people thought never would happen. In my opinion, we're in damn good shape. I'll make one guarantee though, housing will be more expensive next year and more expensive the year after that. Move on, move now, or don't complain later. If you're getting value from my videos and you want to be the first to learn about the change in real estate market, hit subscribe and tack the bell. That'll help both of us. Thanks so much. See you later. Talk to you soon.